Herra Puuja edustaa Rara Lujaa pohjoismaista näkemystä. Hän on Samsungin pohjoismainen markkinointipäällikkö. Tervetuloa lavalle Marko Murnala. Kiitos. Hyvää huomenta. Good morning. So let's change the language to English now. So, and the reason is that uh, I've been working more, most of my life abroad. So, I, I, can, I can speak marketing in Finnish. That's impossible <laughs> for me. So, what I'm going to do today is a couple of things. First of all, I introduce a sample a little bit what we do globally, what do we do in Nordics. Then a little bit on, on myself, so what I have been doing in my, in my life, so why I have the license to speak in here today. Then we move to the consumers, so we move from the shopper to consumer, just that consumers is everything. We need to follow the consumers in the world, and the changes what we see happening at the moment is really, really fast. It's much faster than anticipated. Then I'm going to move to marketing, so talk about a little bit of the marketing. So what are the principles of the marketing and how the marketing and the media and the whole um, landscape is changing. Where are we moving and why all these uh, changes are happening, particularly in the retail at the moment. And what's the role of the consumers? Why are they leading that change at the moment? And then at the end of the presentation, a couple of conclusions to what I see, that what, what and why these things are happening and what are the implications particularly retail and consumers in the market. I hope that's okay for you. First of all, let me introduce a couple of my friends, uh, or colleagues, rather. First with PNG, and he declared a couple of years ago already that digital marketing is dead. Everything that can be digitalized will be digitalized. Sorry to say, that will happen in everything that we do. Also in shopping. So that one percent of grocery shopping will be 50% pretty soon. That test will happen. Anticipate it. it will happen. So everything that we think and do in Samsung, uh, what I believe in marketing is digital. Everything. That's where the world is moving, and it's moving really fast on that direction. Second thing is that the overall the change in our society at the moment, it, it's, it's, it's just moving even faster. So that, think about the change in the past 20 years. So if somebody told you 15 years ago that, that you will have in a pocket a device that you can actually have a maps, navigation, you can have all the information in the world through, through the internet. You can have stock market cured codes, you can have everything there. Would you have believed that one? I don't think so. But it's just a little bit what we have seen. The change will be even faster in it when we go forward. Much faster. So anticipate the change. The change is everything. So if you try to resist the change, you will lose. So let me first introduce a little bit of myself, what I have been doing. So I have, I, I have been a privilege to work a couple of the, or, or quite a lot of the most, most uh, important brands in the world. I've been working with the Nokia quite a lot in different parts of the world, uh, with the PNG, uh, multiple different brands, within, within the media industry, within the investment <coughs> banking as well, and now lately with the Samsung. And uh, it's been quite an interesting journey, and I'm, I'm really happy to be in Samsung at the moment, uh, seeing what the company is, what it can do, and how the things are moving, how technology and consumers are shaping the world at the moment, the way we are. Samsung Electronics, globally, uh, we take very, a, the philosophy of the company is quite simple. And we take very serious to consumers and consumer needs. And particularly that we want to develop a technology that helps the everyday life of the consumers and improve their lives. And that's the core of the philosophy on all the innovation that we bring into the market. And, uh, I have a little bit different perspective on Samsung as well. So nine years in Nokia, so of course we followed quite uh, closely our competition. And uh, when I started Nokia in 2004, uh, when I looked at Samsung first time, it was very clear that Samsung was following the other players. But very fast, the brand crew and also the, the products that uh, were brought to market were the leading products in, the, in, in this category. <coughs> and I'm proud to say that currently, 
it is really the situation that, that in most of the categories when we bring the new innovation, it is definitely the leading innovation uh, in the market. And the company, as you know, it has grown quite a lot throughout the years. So it started at day 1969 in a quite difficult situation after the Korean War. Think about it, it's a little bit like in Finland. Just after the war, we lost quite a lot of land and then we needed to build a society. But they lost everything. The country lost pretty much everything uh, after the Korean War. They needed to build the whole society from the start. Samsung currently represent, well, let me take it back. Uh, Nokia at its peak represented 2.7% of cross national domestic production in Finland. And it had a huge impact on the Finnish society. And it actually lifted us from the uh, depression at that point. Samsung currently represents 25% of the South Korean sector's domestic production. 25%. It's like one fourth of the whole nation. So people, Koreans, when they work for the company, they are not really working for Samsung. They work for a Korean. And there is no, there is, there is failure is not an option for these guys because they want, don't want to fail the country. They're very patriotic in that sense. And Samsung is quite a big company. In 2013, it was $217 billion, the net revenue, and, and we are still growing. So being one of the top five companies, say, in the world in, in terms of the size. So we operate in 220 in 80 countries in 220 operations and we have quite diverse global sales coming from different business categories. So it's not the, the, the things that you use you mostly are TVs, a mobile phones, this consumer electronics, but then we have these uh, <coughs> IT infrastructure things as well. We have semiconductors, we have a uh, we supply screens to a to other manufacturers as well. Something is a as I realized now when working within the Samsung, it's a very hard company to compete against it. So for example, a, our dear competitor uh, is, a, is buying the buying chips from us, buying a, a screens from us as well. And uh, we take the market leadership and marketing quite a uh, quite seriously in that perspective. And in most categories where we are in operating globally, we are the market leader or the number two. And of course, the clear objectives is to be the number one in all categories where, where we are going in and expanding that inequality. Also, the brand value, as you can see from the other, other side, is growing all the time. And the, really the objective is to be the top five brands in the world in that perspective. Which means that we really need to build the meaning and equity of the Samsung brand. It's not the monetary value or just the trademark, but Samsung really needs to have a meaning. And that's what we are doing in Nordics, particularly at the moment. In Nordics, uh, we have been here as a, a separate subsidiary of 22 years, uh, and we have a little over 500 people. So it's a quite sizable operation at the moment. And we have a presence in all our markets where we operate, and of course Iceland as well. In Nordic, currently we have these product categories uh, where we are operating and looking all the time for new opportunities, bringing new <coughs> products into the markets where we are at the moment still in the Nordic as well. That's about the introductions. Now let's move to marketing, marketing innovation and innovation as such. How do I see it? And here's a disclaimer. These are not the Samsung views, these are my views. Based on my history and based on my working experience in different parts of the world, different companies, different brands. So what I've gathered and uh, what I've found out and uh, where we are at the moment as, as a marketeers overall. First of all, everything starts with the consumers. Not the store, not the shopper, but the stuff in the consumers. The consumers that you want to reach and what you actually want to build your brand with. Everything starts from there. That's why the change is so fast at the moment. Because the consumers are changing. Young consumers, as you see, they are changing really, really fast. Those who actually lead the market. 
they are, they are, they are changing really fast and changing, changing us. Secondly, we look at the competitive situation where we are and then the media landscape. Usually these three things, if you understand these well, it's, it's really the choice of what you do in your market. And what we'll do, and we are doing, we are targeting the most progressive consumers in the market. We are not targeting everyone. Everyone. Everybody can, of course, buy the products that we buy. But we are targeting the most progressive and aspirational consumers in the market. Because of the technology is like that. If you get these consumers, you get actually the whole market. That's the beauty of that. And it applies not just on the technology marketing, but it applies in every market. You need to stand for something for your consumers and you need to know exactly who are the consumers that you have. You can, there is no brand in the world who can actually reach all the consumers and have a meeting with them. No get right, and we know what's the, what's the results of that. Here is a media consumption, how the, that is changing as well, so that the, if, you, if you have the slice of the day of our consumers, how the media habits and how, what they are looking at the moment, particularly, these are nudic based data, not the any country, but nudic based data. And you see that the, where, the, where the consumers are, what they are consuming, and how they are behaving. And you see that the traditional mediums, the linear mediums, they are suffering at the moment. This is the 2013 data. 2014, it, just, it has just accelerated the, the, the change. So the linear media, the passive consumer type of media, is changing drastically at the moment as well in the world. Okay, that was the consumer. Moving to the competitive situation. Uh, a little bit there is snapshot of the data, how we look on the Samsung of the data side. We looked at brand, and brand particular two parameters, the, the MTSA most preferring on parts and brand. Secondly, what is the unaided the top three answer we looked at, so it's overall awareness. And then look at the market shares. These two components actually define, when I put it in the equation, this defines so how much we should actually invest in different categories and a different situation, different, uh, different uh, mediums. So the equation is quite simple. In order to grow profitable, you need to grow your brand preference ahead of your values. Applies all industries, all cases. If you look your value, sir, and the volume, sir, if, you, if your volume, sir, is higher than your value, sir, you're buying market, sir. Best brands in the world, if you look to from the interbrand list, they are able to get more value out of the market than volume. And we all live by the value, not the volume. That's where you make the money. So it's very important to balance these two things. It's not enough to actually get the volume out of the market to sell at any price for the consumers. You need to create the meaning to consumers so that they get the, you get the value out of the price. And there's three different things. Think about it. What you sell, what you market and what you make money are three different things, not the same. Many marketeers forget that. Now, the media landscape, the social media, the context of this, uh, this, uh, this uh, format today. Uh, if you don't remember anything from my presentation, remember this slide. This is where the world is going. This is actually where the world is already at the moment. If you don't embrace it, you will find a big difficulties. So the world has moved already from the passive consumption to act active experience and, and, and direct purchase. All these digital uh, web stores, uh, e-commerce stores, everything, that needs to be a heart of your operation. That's a starting point. And everything else is surrounded that one. You have your like a non-traditional, non-linear communication around that one, geared towards that one, that one single like a consumer transaction when they do the purchase. That's what supports that one. And and outside you will have then all these linear 
uh, traditional mediums. And uh, unfortunately, that's something that will disappear in the future. The times of the linear TV will cease to exist in the near future, let's say five years. And the consumers that are now like a, uh, on the YouTube person uh, watching, watching the things, they, they, they don't really watch the TV anymore, sorry to say. So why do you benefit us in the TV? Then I have a little bit case, so, so we, we, we've been currently working quite a lot with the YouTube and, and the Google particularly and we're looking for this, so how can, we, how can we actually attract what is the way the world is moving and how can we actually start doing things a little bit differently. And I know, those who work in the sales, sales will come to tell you that, well, but we want to sell the products, we want to do something that sells the products right now. There is no difference between the brand marketing and the product marketing and sales marketing. Everything is just marketing. You just need to build the brand, you get the brand preference, and then you then you get the sales. That's how it works in marketing. But the role of YouTube, just an example, where the world is moving. 80% of all internet users watch the video. And by 2017, 69 percent, close to 70 percent of oriented traffic will be on the video. So the TV will be an internet as well. Here is a, a little bit data on the uh, on on how big is the YouTube as a channel compared to traditional TV channels in Nordics. So this is Norway, Denmark, uh, then Finland, Finland and Sweden. So all of our Nordic markets, YouTube is already bigger than any of the traditional <coughs> TV channels. Any of the big. And there are of course a different a different a, uh, channels within the YouTube as well. I think about it. 100 hours of video uploaded in YouTube each minute. And it's not just the users like the uh, the young teenagers who are doing these unpacked videos and everything like that. There are traditional media companies doing that, creating their own YouTube channels, and that's the beauty of the internet. There are half a billion YouTube channels already, and the key is that at the market tier, you need to find the ones that are associated close to your target audience which you want to reach. So for example, it's not that you go there broadly, but you need to pick the channels within the YouTube that you want to use in your communication. And you need to find your natural way of doing that. And here's an example of the, probably the, one of the most a traditional linear newspaper mediums to actually find a way of doing that on the way. Uh, so we say Royal House, they have their own YouTube channel. In, in, in the UK, the royal family, they have their own uh, YouTube channel. The White House has their own YouTube channel. Very few companies in Finland have their own YouTube channel. As an example. Now, getting close to the conclusion, so I have three points to mention at the end of the presentation. Follow the consumers. Media channels, marketing, that's everything is defined by the consumers, and particularly the consumers that you want to reach. What is your core target audience? You can't reach everybody. You just need to be the, need to get the consumers that you want. And you really need to create the meaning for that. What your market needs to resonate, what products you actually uh, uh, bring into the market, how do you behave as a company? How do you behave as a person? You need to resonate versus that target audience. There's a big move from the passive media consumption to active experience and direct purchase. That will happen much faster than anticipated. Much faster. And brands like Samsung will invest the majority of media and marketing in online and web and direct consumer experience. That's what we are looking at the moment. My intention is, is very near future, just just do that. Invest everything online, YouTube, and skip all the traditional mediums and, and, 
and, and just do that. Having said that, I thank you.